Hi there, this is a small server mainboard with an Intel Xeon Gold processor and I want to talk a little bit about how these sockets work, how to apply thermal paste in case you have to replace the CPU and, well, stuff like that. Most manufacturers have recommendations for the thermal paste in their manuals. Here is an example from Dell. They want you to draw a little spiral with the thermal paste and uh, well let's check out how that works all the big server manufacturers like dell ibm hp lenovo they all use this micro c uh, thermal paste from shin etsu it's a japanese manufacturer and uh, I find it pretty good because it's easy to remove if you want to clean off, but it's also a little bit difficult to apply, as you will see. You can see that the covered area is not bad, but something I don't like is we have a couple of air bubbles and thermal paste is ex exactly made to remove or to fill the air bubbles and if it creates air bubbles, that's not good. On most of the heat sinks of servers you also find this uh, torque uh, rating here. It says 12 inch pound torque and one revolution and then you should change the side and do it on the other screws. Um, I think the only important thing here is the sequence of the screws. So if you um, mount the heatsink 1, 2, 3, 4, if you remove it 4, 3, 2, 1. But how important is the torque of the screws when you tighten it up? Well. We will see right now. As you can see, there is a leaf spring on each side of the processor. And when we uh, screw the heatsink on, this leaf spring gets tensioned and pulls the heatsink down on the processor and the processor down on its socket. So, if you reach the end of the thread, you can feel that very well. It doesn't matter if you tighten it up or if you just leave it there at the end of the thread because the leaf spring won't move anymore and uh, therefore the force won't change. You should only avoid to over tighten it because the screw or the socket may break and that will create a lot of headache. Although it could be replaced but you first need to have one for replacement. By the way, here is a little table from the Intel processor datasheet. And if you look at the first line there, static compressive load per contact, it's 10 gram to 25 grams maximum. With 3647 pins, we have a minimum load of 36 kilograms and a maximum of, of 91 kilograms and that's what we have to achieve with these screws and springs.
it's amazing to see how easily the thermal paste spreads out but as you can see that's not enough we have a lot of uncovered area here this was the perfect method for the smaller cpus the square cpus from earlier machines but here we need a little bit more Much better, but still not enough. We need another version. A little bit better than only one dot in the center, but still not enough. And you may also have noticed there was an air bubble that escaped uh, luckily, but that's not sure. So if you make a circle, it's very easy to trap some air, so that's not recommended. That's still not really good, but it could be accepted for a low power CPU, but mm, well, it's still a lot of area uncovered. I think that's probably the best method, so the filling ratio here is not bad. It's very easy to apply and yeah, most of the processor surface is covered. Here you can see how much of the processor surface is not covered. And if you keep in mind, the processor chip is only in the middle of this thing, so it's probably enough. And here you can see how the thermal paste spreads out by itself under the pressure of the heatsink. So what's the result? This pattern may be the best for this kind of CPU with this kind of thermal paste. If you have a different CPU and different thermal paste, you have to experiment by your own. But for me, that's the perfect one. Thanks for watching. Thank you.